If you were impressed by the construction of Egypt's new administrative capital, then get ready, because the country is currently building a new pharaonic project, the creation of the world's largest artificial river. The objective? To transform 9,200 square kilometers of desert into a new delta, in order to increase its agricultural land. In this new episode of Looking For, I present the challenges surrounding this titanic project and then show you that a similar project exists in Afghanistan, aiming to build an immense 285 kilometers canal. The stakes behind the new Delta project are manifold, guaranteeing the country's food independence, then securing an additional income stream by exporting part of its harvests. But it is also about meeting the growing food needs of its population, since Egypt's demographic growth is particularly strong. According to the latest projections, the country's population is set to rise dramatically over the next 30 years, from 113 million today to 160 million in 2050. This is an ambitious project for a country where 96% of the land is desert and where the remaining 4% of arable land is being nibbled away by urbanization. The urgency with which President al-Sisi's government is rushing to complete this new pharaonic project is therefore easy to understand. Egypt is currently the world's biggest importer of wheat, and the consequences of the war in Ukraine on soaring prices are weighing heavily on the country's food security. It should be remembered that 80% of its wheat came from Russia and Ukraine until 2022. This shows the country's vulnerability, which must be countered by the new Delta project. Since 2015, Egypt has already gained 5,000 square kilometers of arable land over the desert, but this is still not enough to achieve food autonomy. That's why, in March 2021, President al-Sisi announced the creation of the new Delta and the world's largest man-made river to irrigate over 9,000 square kilometers of new farmland. This huge 114 kilometers river will redirect agricultural wastewater from one of the Nile's branches to irrigate the new Delta's future farmland. It will run along the Mediterranean coast for 50 kilometers from its source before turning further south towards the new Delta. Then, 10 3-meter diameter water pipes will take over for 22 kilometers to transport the water under the existing farmland before moving on to a second artificial river. This will cross the desert for 42 kilometers before reaching the Al Hammam water treatment plant. A huge plant capable of treating 7.5 million cubic meters of agricultural wastewater every day. But there's more to come. 125 kilometers further east, 42 kilometers of pipelines and rivers are planned to transport even more water into the desert from the Nile. And that's just phase one, scheduled for completion in 2025. By 2030, phase two of the project is due to be completed and the new delta will cover 9,200 square kilometers, almost half the size of the Nile Delta. Once operational, the new delta will increase Egypt's arable land by more than 20%, making it the largest agricultural project in Egyptian history. Primarily intended for wheat harvests, it will also enable the cultivation of corn, sugar, fruit and vegetables. What's more, its proximity to ports, industrial zones and major roads will facilitate and reduce the cost of transporting agricultural produce. But that's not all. New industrial zones will be created to handle the conditioning, packaging and processing of foodstuffs destined for export. In total, the budget for the new Delta is around $10 billion, half of which is dedicated to the construction of the 114-kilometer-long artificial river. Once completed, the new delta will help increase Egypt's food security and boost its exports. To put this into context, by 2022, the country was exporting 3.3 billion worth of foodstuffs and hopes to double this figure by 2030. As you can imagine, the project has made significant progress since March 2021. Construction of the two sections of the large artificial river was already complete in March 2023. The connecting pipes are 35% complete. In June 2023, fresh water from the Nile will flow for the first time. However, the country is threatened further south by another mega-project more than 2,000 kilometers away. 
In April 2011, in Western Ethiopia, a monumental construction project began. The birth of the Renaissance Dam. Worth an estimated $4.2 billion, it is the most ambitious hydroelectric project on the African continent. At 145 meters high and stretching for almost two kilometers, this mega dam has the potential to generate over 5,000 megawatts, more than double the output of Egypt's Aswan Dam. Once completed, it will supply electricity to 60% of the population. According to World Bank data, only 51% of Ethiopians will have access to electricity by 2020. The Great Renaissance Dam should enable Ethiopia to combat widespread poverty and improve standards of living. But to make this giant dam work, the country has to fill a gigantic 74 cubic kilometers reservoir by interrupting the course of the Blue Nile. And this is where the situation gets complicated as the river flows downstream towards Sudan and Egypt. Along with the White Nile, it is one of the Nile's two main tributaries, supplying almost 60% of the Nile's downstream flow. For Egypt, already in desperate need of water, this is a major concern and a terrible threat to its subsistence. On March 24th, Ethiopia announced that the dam was 90% complete. A fourth and final filling of the reservoir was launched this summer, further reducing the flow of the Nile, Egypt has voiced its concerns loud and clear. The Egyptian Minister of Water Resources and Irrigation, Hani Sewilam, denounced the disastrous effects of Ethiopia's unilateral measures and the immeasurable damage to the social and economic stability of Egypt, the main country concerned along with Sudan. In addition, Ethiopia is adopting a random method of filling its reservoirs. It blocks quantities of water without coordinating with the two downstream countries and without taking their needs into account. Fortunately, the country now seems ready to negotiate, since talks on the conditions for operating and filling the dam resumed on August 27th in Cairo after two years of suspension. But until an agreement is signed, the situation remains urgent for Egypt, making the completion of its new delta all the more important. But Egypt is not the only country currently involved in an agricultural megaproject in the desert. Further east, a similar situation can be observed. Afghanistan, under the leadership of the Taliban, is considering the Kosh Tepa Canal as a means of transforming its arid lands into fertile farmland. The project is expected to stimulate the country's economic growth and make it agriculturally self-sufficient. The 285 kilometers Kosh Tepa Canal is to be built by the Taliban in northern Afghanistan to divert water from the Amu Darya. Construction is due to start in March 2022. According to the Taliban, this initiative will convert 550,000 hectares of desert into farmland, and they have made the Kosh Tepa Canal a key project. Between April 2022 and February 2023, over 100 kilometers of canal had already been dug. But the construction of the Kosh Tepa Canal in northern Afghanistan is one of the key issues for regional stability today. According to Vadim Sokolov of the International Fund for Saving the Aral Sea, changes to the water balance in the transboundary basin could increase regional tensions. The colossal project aims to divert around 10 billion cubic meters of water from the Amu Darya River to irrigate the north of the country. But this ambitious irrigation project is raising many concerns, particularly in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, where losses could reach 15% of water destined for irrigation, increasing pressures already felt due to climate change. So what exactly does the construction of this canal mean for downstream countries? Hypothetical scenarios suggest that Afghanistan could divert up to 30% of the water from the Amu Darya River once the canal is completed. The consequences for downstream countries would be disastrous. Indeed, such an allocation of water would threaten entire regions that depend exclusively on water from the Amu Darya for irrigation downstream first in Turkmenistan and then in Uzbekistan, thus jeopardizing agriculture and livelihoods. 
This situation is all the more worrying given that the Amu Darya also feeds the Aral Sea, which is already almost dry. Eugene Simonov, International Coordinator of Rivers Without Boundaries, warns that further extraction of water from the river could compromise the restoration of aquatic ecosystems in the Aral Sea region and lead to the extinction of certain species. Since 1960, the Aral Sea has lost 75% of its surface area and 90% of its water volume, significantly increasing its salinity and most endemic species have disappeared. The construction of the Kosh Tepe Canal could therefore be disastrous for the Aral Sea and its ecosystem. Afghanistan's growing involvement in water management projects, therefore, requires increased collaboration with its neighbors, which is, unfortunately, not always straightforward. While, on the one hand, an Uzbek delegation visited Kabul in March 2023, suggesting possible cooperation to complete the canal project, on the other, the lack of international agreements involving Afghanistan on water use in the Amu Darya Basin could exacerbate future tensions. To date, Afghanistan has not signed any regional or international treaty on the use of the region's transboundary waters, and the Taliban have always maintained that the country has the right to use the waters of the Amu Darya. Unilateral water management is also a source of tension with Iran. The two states dispute the flow of the Helmand River, on which Iran depends to irrigate its lands in the arid south of the country. This flow has diminished downstream following the construction of dams on the Afghan side. As an arid country, Iran is experiencing increasing episodes of drought, particularly in Sistan Baluchistan, where Lake Hamun, fed by the Helmand, has now dried up, whereas it used to be at the heart of the world's seventh largest wetland. Around the lake, flora and fauna, agriculture and cattle have disappeared, leaving behind a desolate landscape. This is a critical situation for Iran and one that is generating strong tensions with its neighbor. The latest example of this was on May 27th, when tensions between Kabul and Tehran over water supplies led to an exchange of fire at the border. Nine days earlier, Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi had warned Afghanistan to let water flow from Helmand to his country calling on Kabul to take his warning seriously and not complain later. While Afghanistan aspires to exploit its water resources to support its growth and food security, the new Kosh Tepe Canal is certain to create new tensions with its neighboring countries further north, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. Both countries are expecting severe agricultural losses and large-scale resettlement. Unfortunately, the recent border conflict with Iran has shown that reaching an agreement with the Taliban may be more difficult than expected. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon on Looking 4.